Breakups are tough. They can leave you feeling lost and heartbroken, but you know what's even harder? When the other person won't let go. The story of Michelle Marks and Lamont Wright is one of dysfunction, secrets, and exploitation. I want to thank Rosetta Jenkins for supporting my channel. If you guys also want to chip in and help me, head over to buy me a cup of coffee. Your funds will help me to produce better content. So thank you so much. Me, I'm poor. Michelle Marks is a 23-year-old woman with aspirations of becoming a fashion designer and traveling the world. She may work as a waitress at Fornino, a pizzeria at Brooklyn Bridge Park and live in public housing in Crown Heights with her mother and sister at the moment. But with hard work and dedication, all of this will be a thing of the past. She's got her heart set on a brand new life in sunny California. There's just one thing standing in the way. Lamont Wright. Her ex isn't ready to call it quits just yet. The two were together for three years. Wright is 23 years her senior. The man's old enough to be her dad. I'm not being judgmental, but it makes you wonder about the nature of their relationship. Was it traditional or transactional? Although the pair had been together for a while, Michelle kept their connection under wraps. This may have had something to do with the mystery man's lengthy criminal record. Lamont is basically the definition of a dusty, with well over a dozen arrests under his belt, mostly assaults. In 1990, the Flatbush resident served a year in the big house for attempted burglary. He was taken into custody for assaulting an underage girl back in 2007. And most recently, the 53-year-old was given a summons for drinking an open container of alcohol in public. What a catch. Obviously, Wright hasn't really been a great addition to Michelle's life. Their on and off May-December romance was turbulent and even violent. Although Michelle pulled the plug on the relationship weeks ago, Wright won't take no for an answer. Instead, he leaves threatening messages via Facebook and audio. In a recorded message, he can be heard saying, I promise you, you're not done with me because either I'm going to wind up in jail or I'm going to wind up in a grave. Wright even resorts to intimidating his ex in person. He begins to stalk marks at her place of work and residence. On June 2nd, Michelle was walking in the park with a co-worker when she spotted Wright. Later that night, he jumped out of the bushes while she was on a cigarette break and yelled at her for kissing this white boy. Lamont was referring to 39-year-old Samuel Hall, the new man in Mark's life. The fact that she was in a whole other relationship just seemed to fuel his obsession. The more Michelle ignored him, the more hysterical he became. In a really disturbing audio, Lamont warns Michelle, if I were to blow your fu- out. Everyone would say that I was wrong. Things came to a head on June 5th when Wright shoved Michelle in the hallway of her apartment building, knocking grocery bags out of her hands. She screamed for help and her mother Pauline came to her aid. This was the first time that her mother had ever met Lamont and he made a terrible impression to say the least. Pauline asked Wright, why did you hit my daughter? And he just stood there with a blank expression. Pauline is certain that he was under the influence or something. It was like the elevator didn't hit at the top. He didn't run or anything, just stood there staring. No remorse, no smiling, nothing. Both mother and daughter would make a complaint to police, and Michelle also made plans to get an order of protection. This was the last straw. Michelle just finished her shift at Fornino. Although yesterday's events may have shaken her, she remained professional and behaved as though nothing was out of the ordinary. Michelle's on the phone with Samuel. As she makes her way to the bus stop, Lamont approaches her. I just want to talk, he says, but Michelle wants nothing to do with her former boyfriend. Suddenly, she shouts, he's got a gun. Samuel is obviously alarmed by the plea, so he alerts Pauline via text message. Although there were no witnesses, all signs point to Lamont. Police zero in on the troubled man the following day and take him in for questioning. Naturally, the jealous ex-lover denies any wrongdoing. He claims that he had been communicating with a woman named Emily from Ohio at the time of Michelle's murder. His claims are quickly dispelled when police recover cell phone data that indicates that his cell phone was in the vicinity of Brooklyn Bridge Park on that fateful night. Lamont. You, you, you don't, you hurt, you left the hurting family, but you're going to reap what you sow, and it, uh, be, I, I pray for you. That God will have mercy on you, but you're going to, you're going to, you're not going to get away. 
Friends and co-workers gathered at the scene of the crime Tuesday afternoon and held a vigil for the late woman. Colleagues said she was more of a sister than a co-worker. Her boss, Michael Ayub, shared the following with PIX11 News. She was a beautiful young lady. She worked hard. We actually just pushed her up to some managerial skills. She's been here for years and she's a very trusted member of the family. Lamont totally turned Michelle's friends and family's life upside down. Although she made at least two complaints of harassment in the past, nothing was done to protect her. Sadly, her situation is common for many women in the U.S. According to the CDC, one in three women have been stalked at some point in their lives. Research has shown a relationship between stalking, victimization, and complaints of pain and poor current health status, injury, and chronic disease. It pains me to think of the emotional toll this must have taken on Michelle. The media likened the trial to a soap opera because of the theatrics, varying emotions that were displayed, but most troubling, the secrets that were revealed. Throughout the trial, Wright behaved as if he had better things to do. For weeks, Lamont made it his duty to terrorize Michelle. In one of many Facebook messages, Mark's obsessive ex-lover threatened to hunt her down and kill her if she didn't respect or see him. Prosecutor Michelle Kaminsky surmised that his actions were premeditated. In another message, Wright dropped a bombshell. Apparently, Michelle and Lamont had been carrying on a sexual relationship for the past eight years, which means that she was 15 at the time. Pauline is flabbergasted. This was a quiet relationship that started when she was 15, meaning you're a child molester. Mark's mother, Pauline, said in her victim impact statement, how could you live with yourself? Of course, Wright had nothing to say before Brooklyn Supreme Court Justice John Hetch, which angered Michelle's relatives. Why? Why won't he say anything? One sister of Michelle Marks cried out from the gallery of Brooklyn Supreme Court. Another loved one chimed in. If he was innocent, he should say something. But Lamont remained silent. The 25-year-to-life sentence spoke volumes.